Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Tujin. Welcome to MBT Studios and I am excited. So with me today, I have the Sauvage A20A and the A20D. One's an amplifier and one's a DAC and they are stackable. The A20A is about $220 USD with the A20D being about $400 USD. Now, this is very similar to the SMSL stack that I reviewed, um, the DA9 in particular as an amplifier uh, in a previous video. And I basically claimed that that amplifier was probably the best amp you can get for under $500. It just does everything so well. It has incredible specs and it performs, especially in a near field setup seen behind me. But a lot of you guys ask the question whether or not this could power or this amplifier could power speakers or more demanding speakers in a medium sized room. So I decided to do just that. So in my home theater, I have Kef R11s. Those are $5,000 speakers, roughly USD. And theoretically, these amps should power that speaker. It goes down to about, uh, I believe, 3.7 ohms in impedance, and it's about 90 dB uh, in sensitivity. So theoretically, the 50 watts at 8 ohms, or 50 to 60, depending on where you look, should be enough, and these amplifiers claim to go to 2 ohms at 150 watts. So yeah, theoretically, it should power the speakers just fine, and it should be able to fill up a medium-sized room, no problem. But before we get into the performance, let's talk about the differences between the DA9 and the Sabaj, uh, specifically in their design. So as you can see, the Sabaj is a bigger unit. And when I opened up the DA9, I noticed that the, the actual chassis enclosure is used as a heatsink. So theoretically, or just looking at the unit, having a bigger chassis basically means that it has a bigger heatsink and it should be able to perform uh, at higher dynamic peaks without overheating or you know affecting performance. But what you do lose with this amplifier is the Bluetooth input, although that isn't such a big deal if you are using the paired DAC because the DAC does have um, the Bluetooth uh, connectivity. And another thing that you lose is the LCD screen, which I quite liked. Um, with the Sabaj, you get like this LED screen or fluorescent screen um, that isn't as intuitive or straightforward. You're going to have to look at the menu, but it does have treble, bass control, um, and some EQ profiles that um, are essentially labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you only know what profile is what by looking at the manual and memorizing what profile is what. But besides that, um, sound-wise, the DA9 and the um, Sabaj sound exactly the same. Uh, as I said in my previous video, they basically turn your speakers into studio monitors. There is no real coloration, but they have exceptional amount of power that is able to just drive your speakers to, you know, their capabilities. And with the R11s, yeah, it, it definitely did the trick. So in my home theater, normally what I have is a Marantz, uh MM7025. It's a power amp that does about 140 watts at eight ohms. And that is connected to the SR7012, um, which is a receiver. And those two units cost way more than this, than this amplifier, this stack in particular. That would be roughly about $3,000 USD if you catch it on sale. While this stack is about $600. And I'll tell you this, for two channel listening, this is very exceptional and it provided very similar performance. So in terms of volume attenuation, the SMSL has more steps. It goes up to 70 from zero to 70, while the Sabaj goes from essentially negative 60 to zero. And in my listening room, I had it with, I had it at negative 20. And that was what I was listening to um, with my Kef R11 in my listening position. And that would give me about 80 uh, dB of volume or loudness and with about 85 dB peaks. And that's typically what I listen to and you still have about 20 steps of headroom. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this amp um, completely, you know, all the way to at the zero mark because that's when you start getting distortion and you start clipping the amp or pushing it to levels that you shouldn't really be using the amp at. But at negative 20, 
it was pretty impressive. So let's talk about the sound. So starting with the bass, there is some serious authority going on. This amp can basically pressurize my room with the R11s and playing a song like Hey Now by London Grammar, it's a song that I play all the time um, and Jay plays it all the time on all his speakers and yeah, this was able, that song pressurized the room. It had the speed that the R11s are able to do and it just worked, which is very surprising because I'm using an amplifier that's 1 20th of the price of a speaker and I'm finding no difference uh, in terms of bass when it comes to when comparing the Marantz to the Sabaj. Now, when it gets to mid range, there is no real coloration. In fact, the, the speakers sound a little dry compared to the Marantz and um, vocals do sound sweet because R11 sound really good for vocals. Um, but um, there's no lushness that I get from like, let's say my Denon PMA 1600NE. And in terms of soundstage, it provides it as is. So the R11s provide really good soundstage overall. Um, imaging is great and it's generally holographic. But this amplifier does not, um, you know, make it even more holographic like my Denon PMA 1600NE. And it doesn't um, have like the same effect as a Hegel amplifier when you spend more money. So yes, you're not getting everything with this amplifier, but in terms of just being able to drive a speaker and provide more of a studio-like presentation, this is doing it. Now, the treble is where there's some trouble, at least for me. Um, well, not really, because my room's treated and it's quite damp. Um, so strings can come off sharp. Instruments can come off a little slightly, you know, aggressive, and that can add up to fatigue over time, especially with the R11s. But because my room is treated and um, the way I have my speakers tilted, um, I could honestly listen to this no problem for hours. In fact, I was jamming out before I was doing this review and I was having an absolute blast. But if you're trying to replicate my exact system, know this, it is gonna be a bit sharp and you may find it fatiguing. So some of you guys have asked in the previous video, like questions where it's like, hey, can I use this amplifier to power Klipsch um, RP600Ms? And those are very efficient bookshelf speakers. So yes, you can. In fact, in a medium sized room, no problem. Large, larger room, yeah, sure. As long as you're not trying to fill a venue, um, go for it. But the question you need to ask yourself is, is this gonna work well synergy wise? Do you like the brightness of your speaker and do you have fatigue listening to your speaker at loud volumes? Because this is not gonna, you know, um, make your speaker darker. It's just gonna basically take what your speaker is tuned and amplify it. And uh, that's the question you need to ask. Me personally, I would not use this with Klipsch RP600Ms because I'm sensitive to a brighter sound. And I find that those horn speakers can become fatiguing over time, especially for music. For home theater, fantastic. I love the dynamics. But for music, it's just not for me. But overall, I'm really impressed. And I'm glad you guys asked in the comments and, you know, kind of pushed me to do this experiment because it works. And it works really well. Now, having more power obviously helps at even more dynamic ranges, um, at higher peaks. Um, I wouldn't really recommend this for home theater because for home theater, at least with the R11s in my room, I can hit some really high, high peaks and this amplifier may clip because at negative 20, you are reaching that threshold. And just uh, to experiment a bit more, I did install some bass shakers in my home theater. And those have are essentially uh, rated at like four ohms, 50 watts. Um, although I don't know if that rating is accurate or not. But having those with this uh, amplifier at high volumes, I did hear this amplifier clip. So it's not a boundless amount of power that's gonna power a subwoofer or anything. But at a generally, you know, normal listening level with decent speakers that aren't too hard to drive, this amplifier works. And for 220 bucks, you're not gonna get anything better than this. Unless you look into the used market or win a lottery, or you know a raffle or something. This is really good performance and it's worth celebrating because 
hey, it just gets more people into the hobby. And if you like a studio kind of presentation and, you know, for near fail, this is a awesome solution. And if you're just looking, if you're on a budget and you're trying to assemble a hi-fi system or, you know, a system B or system, you know, third system, this is a unit that works quite well. And if you need Bluetooth or more of an all-in-one uh, um, solution, the SMSL DA9 is maybe something that you want to go for. But there's never an issue with me, at least, with having more than one option to choose from. So I welcome this amplifier. I think it's awesome. It gets a high recommendation from me. And that basically wraps up my review. So if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. And I definitely read the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. Peace.